Good morning to all of you. And again, I want to commend you for joining us for our morning worship devotion. And as we begin our time of worship, uh, let me just encourage you with God's word in Acts 17, verse 28. He says, in him, we live and move and have our being. God is the author and the giver of life. And the reason we're even able to come and rejoice and give thanks to him is because he has shown us his love and his goodness every day of our lives. And so let us be thankful as we approach him in worship and prayer this morning. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we are so thankful and we're so glad that you have not only awakened us once more, but you are drawing us, Lord, by your cords of loving kindness. Thank you for your great love and mercy that is found in your Son, Jesus Christ. As we begin our time of worship, may you be honored in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are the constant in every wind of change. The one that I run to, my forever hiding place. Take me into your shelter and save it. Nations fall. 
It's your unfading through it all All creation shouts and sings To the unshakable King The unshakable King It's who you are, Jesus It's who you are to you are my Lord You're the greatest name The greatest name on earth oh. It's only you Yeah. 
God truly inhabits the praises of His people. And at this point, I'd like us to join together with our brothers and sisters in Christ from all over the world as we unite in prayer for our na the nations of the world. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2 says this, O Lord, I have heard the report of you, and your work, O Lord, do I fear. In the midst of the years, revive it. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace in the name of Jesus. We are united in prayer, and we are in awe of the ways you have been faithful to your people over the centuries. Time and time again, you have revived your church and poured out your spirit on the peoples of our world. We are not satisfied uh, just to be hearing of past glory and magnificent moments. We believe we have come to our own historic hour. Our world is desperate for a touch from heaven. With millions still in the grip of COVID-19, supply chains ruptured, and world economies broken, we humbly cry out to you, Father, for a fresh move of your Holy Spirit. Repeat them in our day what you have done throughout history. As your church proclaims the gospel, we ask you to revive us. We pray and ask you to redeem millions from every tribe and tongue and people and nation. In the name of your Son, Jesus, amen. We are going to continue on our uh, reflection on the book of Proverbs. And for this morning, uh, we're going to look at some verses from Proverbs 23. Uh, let me read these verses uh, to you, uh, verses 17 to 21 and 26 to 28. Let not your heart envy sinners, but continue in the fear of the Lord all the day. Surely there is a future, and your hope will not be cut off. Hear, my son, and be wise, and direct your heart in the way. Be not among drunkards or among gluttonous eaters of meat. For the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and slumber will clothe them with rags. My son, give me your heart, and let your eyes observe my ways. For a prostitute is a deep pit, an adulteress is a narrow well. She lies in wait like a robber, and increases the traitors among mankind. You know, I've entitled this brief devotion, Be Careful With Your Heart. You know, the author of uh, uh, Proverbs 23 uh, is different from Solomon. Uh, this belongs to a fourth segment of collections or sayings. And here, as I said, the author is not identified. But uh, the author has several admonitions concerning having the right perspectives in life. Uh, and we will focus, as I said, on these few verses that sum up the warnings 
about how we are to live wisely in our daily lives. Now, you will note that uh, if you read the whole chapter, that these sayings are actually mostly negative imperatives or advice not to do something because of the negative consequences that will result. And, uh, you know, we are able to live wisely by guarding our hearts against some things, but at the same time directing our hearts towards other things. Now, you know, when the Bible speaks about the heart, it's not speaking about the, this muscle that pumps blood into the rest of our body, but it is the faculty of who we are that thinks and feels and decides on things, whether it's right or wrong. That's why we need to be careful with our hearts. And so, uh, you know, when we, talked about, when we talk about directing our hearts towards the things of God, it means uh, our hearts are uh, to direct our hearts to advance, to move forward into the paths of God. And in this, uh, in the remainder of our time, I'd like to uh, share with you three things that we are to direct our hearts uh, towards so that we might live wisely. The first is to direct your heart towards the fear of the Lord. We read it earlier, verse 17 says, Let not your heart envy sinners, but continue in the fear of the Lord all the day. You know, there is, uh, 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 you know, we've lived long enough in this world to know that there is an attractiveness to the lifestyle of sinners, isn't it? You know, because they seem to enjoy the pleasures of this life without the fear of consequences of their actions. You know, but... Uh, the problem with this lifestyle is this. It is deceptive. Why? Because it is so short-lived. And the, the author says there is no future in it. And we need to learn to guard our hearts against envying those who live uh, sinful lifestyles. Because uh, another Proverbs, Proverbs 14, does say this. A tranquil heart gives life to the flesh, but envy makes the bones rot. You know, it has that effect on us that it affects us, perhaps even physically, when we're envious of others. Instead, the author says, we are to continue in the fear of the Lord. And again, what is the fear of the Lord? We've learned this already, perhaps in the last pro uh, several Proverbs. It is a continuing reverence and awe of God, which leads to a life of obedience and really a hatred for sin. And the Lord promises, if we have the fear of the Lord, if we continue in it, there will be a hope and a future for us. And so that's the first um, thing we're to direct our hearts towards, the fear of the Lord. The second thing we're to direct our hearts towards is to direct our hearts towards self-control. Verse 19 again says this, Hear my son and be wise and direct your heart in the way. Do not, be among, do not among drunkards or, glutter, uh, or among gluttonous eaters of meat. For the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty and slumber will clothe them with rags. Now, it's important for us to remember that God provides all things for our enjoyment, as 1 Timothy 6 verse 17 says. But you know what's happened? Sin has actually perverted our appetites. And so our tendency is to abuse these desires. Um, so people end up in drunkenness, gluttony, or laziness. And the warning is, this all will end in poverty. Again, the Proverbs author admonishes us. <laughs> you know, he says this, not to keep company with the people who are given to these excesses. But instead, as he teaches us in other Proverbs, learn to be self-disciplined in our habits and to be diligent in our work. Now, think about this, you know. Uh, a self-disciplined life is really the mark of a disciple of Christ, isn't it? The word disciple and, self, and self-disciplined have the same root word, isn't it? And the good thing is this, uh, as I said, the, the essence of what it means to be a disciple is a self-disciplined way of life under God's grace. It's not in our own effort, but it's by the grace of God. And number three uh, thing that we are to direct our hearts towards is towards moral uprightness. Verse 26 again says this, My son, give me your heart and let not your heart observe my ways. Let your heart rather observe my ways. For a prostitute is a deep pit. An adulteress is a narrow well. She lies in wait like a robber and increases the traitors among mankind. Now, you will see this in uh, not just this proverb, but others as well, that 
A prostitute is not only one who engages in sexual relationships for money, but one who is immoral. And the author of Proverbs was warning the disciples of the dangers of engaging in immoral relationships. And he uses vivid pictures to describe the dangers. The first one is a deep pit and a narrow well, which speaks of when, you know, when somebody falls into it, it's so hard to get out of it. Uh, the second um, uh, picture of what happens with the dangers of immorality is it's like a robber who strikes you when you least expect it. Uh, we believe and we know from Scripture that sexual intimacy is a gift from God that is intended to be enjoyed within the boundaries of marriage. But outside of it, it brings so much trouble that it's not worth getting into. And this is not the only time that the Proverbs author warns us all throughout the Proverbs, all throughout the Scripture, um, sexual immorality is something that we should avoid because of the dangers and because of the consequences of it. Now, um, again, let me bring this to a conclusion. Um, we said, uh, as the Proverbs author already uh, in intimated, that there are some things that we are to avoid because of the consequences. But it's not just saying no to things, it's also directing our hearts towards the things of God. And so we, we are to direct our hearts towards the fear of the Lord, towards self-control, and uh, direct our hearts to, um, um, uh, toward moral uprightness. And so we learn in conclusion that directing our hearts towards God's path brings an assurance of a hope and a future. You know, in this time of uncertainty about what is up ahead, we don't need to guess how we ought to live our lives. You know, the wonderful promise of God is if that we are in Christ, His grace is available to us, and He trains us to say no to ungodliness and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. And so, I want to end, uh, let me lead you in prayer as we end our time of devotion. Father, we're so grateful, Lord, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Lord, we don't need to guess how we ought to live our lives. Lord, for your word gives us clear precepts and principles and truths that if we follow, Lord, you said you will give us a hope in the future. For your word says, even in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in a future. And Lord, you said, uh, you will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Lord, let there be a grace released upon your people to seek you in this hour, to seek you in your word, Father. Uh, for your words, Father, do bring us life and blessing. And so, Lord, give us confidence that your words, Father, are able to grant us uh, not only life, but even salvation. And so thank you, Lord, for your grace upon us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's worship God once more. A thousand hallelujahs God be lifted to your name. A thousand hallelujahs God be lifted once again. All creation lift its voice to clear into and oh Lord, how great you are. So a thousand hallelujahs, a thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift to your name. A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift once again. All creation lift its voice, declare until the end. i
and hallelujahs, God will lift the horns again. All creation lift its voice, declare until the end. Oh Lord, how great you are. You are so May the grace of God abound to you today so that you may abound in every good work. God bless you all.